In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about sample sizes and margin of error. It turns out if I plot margin of error on the y-axis and sample size on the x-axis, as sample size increases, margin of error falls. Sample size goes up, margin of error goes down. I'm going to use different values of n. I'll do it three different times. And I'll recalculate the margin of error. And the margin of error is this part of the equation. I'll also recalculate several different times, three times, the confidence interval. So now I'll do an example. The mean is equal to 80. The standard deviation is equal to 20. The sample size is 100. And the confidence coefficient is 1.96. And I discussed this in another video. I start with a sample size of 100. I calculate the margin of error. And that's equal to 1.96 times 20, which is the standard deviation, divided by the sample size, the square root of the sample size, which is 100. This is equal to 1.96 times 20 divided by 10. This is equal to 1.96 times 2, which is equal to 3.92. Now I'll calculate the confidence interval. And that's equal to 80, which is the mean, plus or minus the margin of error. So it's 80 plus or minus 3.92. The lower bound of the equation is 80 minus 3.92, which is equal to 76.08. And the upper bound is 80 plus 3.92, which is equal to 83.92. So the margin of error is 3.92. The lower bound is 76.08. The upper bound is 83.92. Now I'm going to reduce the sample size to 49, about half. So the margin of error is equal to 1.96 times 20, which is the standard deviation, divided by the square root of the sample size, which is 49 which is equal to 1.96 times 20 divided by 7, which is the square root of 49, which equals to 1.96 times 2.9, which is equal to 5.68. The confidence interval is equal to 80, which is the mean, plus or minus 5.68, or the margin of error, which is 5.68. So the lower bound is 80 minus 5.68, which is 74.32. The upper bound is 80 plus 5.68, which is 85.68. The margin of error is 5.68. The lower bound is 74.32, the upper bound is 85.68, and the sample size was 49. Now I'm going to kick up the sample size to 196 and recalculate these values. The sample size is 196, 196. The margin of error is equal to 1.96 times 20, which is the standard deviation, divided by 196, or the square root of the sample size, equals 1.96 times 20 divided by the square root of 196, which is 14. This equals to 1.96 times 1.4, and this equals to 2.80. So now I have the confidence interval, and the confidence interval is going to be equal to 
80, which is the mean, plus or minus the margin of error. So I have 80 plus or minus 2.8. So the lower bound is 80 minus 2.8, which is 77.2. The upper bound is 80 plus 2.8. which is 82.80. So the margin of error is 2.8. The lower bound is 77.20. The upper bound is 82.80. Now I'm going to graph these points and let me get rid of everything. If I plot margin of error along the y-axis and sample size along the x-axis, I see that as sample size increases, margin of error goes down. Sample size increases, margin of error goes down. And as I put in the values and plot the points, you'll see that as sample size does increase, the margin of error begins to fall. As sample size goes up, margin of error goes down, and the width of the confidence interval goes down too. As sample size increases, it becomes easier to predict the population mean. That's the conclusion overall.